I'd like to illustrate a chi-square test of independence using Excel. So suppose I've got this table of observed frequencies. Um, so one categorical variable here, country, and some sort of um, declaration, yes or no. So the test statistic is based on expected frequencies in addition to these observed frequencies, and those expected frequencies come from row and column totals. So let's put those row totals in. So using the sum function, sum the numbers in that column. I can copy this along. And let me set up now the row totals. So adding those two cells and pasting that formula down. <clears throat> and this 400 in the bottom right is the sample size. So the sum of all six numbers, or the sum of the column totals, or the sum of the row totals. Expected frequencies now. The formula for that is row total, times the column total divided by sample size n. Now I want to copy and paste this formula so I'm going to lock in both the column and row of the sample size. D2 here is the row total and when I paste that down I want only the 2 to change. Two, three, Four, but I don't want the column to change so I lock in the D. With the column total, oops, with the column total I don't want the row to change so I'm going to lock in um, row 5. So now when I paste this down, that updates and across evaluated that formula, this one here, let's have a look at the, the formula for that, it's pulled in the middle row total, the second column total, and again sample size in. If I copy across these row and column total formulae, we can see that the row and column totals are exactly the same for the observed frequencies as they are for the expected frequencies. Now, <clears throat> the test statistic is based on the observed minus expected squared divided by expected. So, observed minus expected squared divided by expected. And copying that down and then across gives us the contributions of each of those cells towards the test statistic. The test statistic ex itself is just the sum of all six of those, and so that is the test statistic. Now, the chi-square test is one-sided, it's always a, an upper tail test, and the degrees of freedom is based on R minus 1 times C minus 1. So R minus 1 times C minus 1. And that is, there are three rows and two columns, so two degrees of freedom. If we look at the shape of this, that's the same as skipping a row, skipping a column and counting the number of cells left. So that's where the degrees of freedom comes from. So critical value comes from the function chi-square.inv inverse. Probability is the 95th percentile and the degrees of freedom is 2. And so the critical value is 5.991. And this is larger than it, so we'd reject H0. Alternatively, we could work out a p-value. Again, it's upper tail, so 1 minus the chi-square distribution. We use the test statistic 
the degrees of freedom and yes indeed we want a, a probability so cumulative and um, because this test statistic is so deep in the rejection region the p-value is very very small and again we'd conclude to reject the null hypothesis.